Hello everyone, my name is Vipin Danu, and I'm here with you today to share the findings of my master's thesis, which looked at the use of uh, immersive technologies as a tool to visualize climate impacts on our cities. So a lot of work has been um, carried out by institutions like the UN um, around effects of climate change, such as rising sea levels. But unfortunately, there's a cert still certain level of unawareness. And this is due to the amount and how information is um, depicted. So normally this is how um, we get to see the information, which is lots of text, academic, uh, focused towards academia. And the issue is there's too much information for the layperson to digest. So we started, uh, started looking at how this information could be boiled down and shared with the general public. And one of them being um, photos or videos, which is uh, the most common way of um, sharing information. But um, research has shown that these type of um, visual representations are effective to only to a certain extent. So we started thinking, how about if I created a time machine? So we currently possess all the ingredients um, to create. So um, first thing, we had to jump in a, an area where we're going to study the impacts of rising sea levels, which is in Australia, um, a region called Surfers Paradise, which is in the east coast, um, an area which is very popular with, um, with the locals and tourists is Cavill Avenue. And in the past, we had issues of flooding and um, rising sea levels leading to erosion right along the coast. So as part of the research, um, we went, went to get data, um, but also photographs to um, try to come up with a, a, a concept, a visualization, which showcased what could potentially happen in an event of flooding with the current infrastructure we have today. And this is using, um, and this is augmented um, using a virtual reality headset, which is um, normally commonly the most common one is the uh, Quest, the Oculus Quest 2. But also to get the actual data uh, from the current infrastructure, LiDAR scanning um, technology was used. So how did we proceed with um, the creation of the virtual reality experience? So first, we contacted experts from a range of fields, conducted a site visit, uh, did um, the LiDAR scan of each individual buildings, um, and optimized them as um, the, the format itself is a, in a mobile platform, exported to the real-time engine, which was then developed and beta tested. So the way this was created was using a modular system. So each and every part of the infrastructure was individually scanned and superimposed in the space to create, to recreate a digital twin of the environment. And an area was also dedicated for um, immersion and interaction as well as navigation. And this was the, the site that was proposed to the experts by interview. And this is what the experience was. If you'd like to experience a simulation on your phone or laptop, um, please scan this QR code, which would take you to a 360 experience where you'll be able 
to see the impact on the simulated urban setting. The experts we used as part of this research range from academia all the way to local business owners. And the key findings were that VR can actually be used to raise awareness of climate change, but also um, as an educational tool, bring people to actually interact, which uh, increased uh, empathy, drive emotion, but also as a tool to um, use for risk uh, management and evacuation training as well. So there's a few limitations in this research, um, but the main ones were the time restrictions, which um, due to the limited time I had to come up with this project, only a set amount of data could be collected. The cost of the VR headset, even though the cost is going down, uh, the initial cost was quite um, expensive in India. The fragmented aesthetics of the LiDAR scanning was um, raised among the experts as they were seen to be a long time in the future where the, the architecture or the urban setting crumbled, where in fact it was just the aesthetic of the LiDAR. Um, and there's also the uncanny perception where you had um, your hands visible in the VR space, but not your body. And that created a bit of concern with if, uh, some people. So the future directions of the projects will lead to better immersion via hand tracking, which uh, Oculus is currently developing. Olfactory, um, hopefully something that would be useful in the future, where we had um, smell and tactility better in integrated. And the idea of um, multi-user, so you have multiple participants in the space to see what's happening and experience the same, the same um, VR environment. So we previously have used climate change as a reason to directly impact uh, people's awareness. But what if we use a set of enablers to target people's awareness? And this is what this research conveyed in a, in a diagrammatical form, is that there are seven enablers that are required to create awareness uh, of climate change in VR. And a few of these are emotions, sensors, feelings, the use of animal um, agency to drive empathy, make it local, so have local anchors like buildings um, um, or settings, urban settings that people would immediately recognize. Um, it also relies on scientific data, as well as creating um, mobility and um, interactivity. Thank you.